Welcome to this JTAG Live demonstration. JTAG Live is a new suite of tools that will help the design engineer debug hardware prototypes or any board using the boundary scan chains on their board. JTAG Live starts with a project wizard, but first you'll need a boundary scan controller. JTAG Live supports several boundary scan controllers from the FPGA vendors, as well as the JTAG Technologies 3705 USB Explorer which is the one I'll be using here today. Let's bring up the project wizard again. We're going to create a new project. Give it a name and a location. And then we need to define the devices on the board in the boundary scan chains. This board has two chains. We'll start off with tap one and define the devices. The first chip in the chain is U200. This is a 245 buffer. We'll pull up the BSDL file for that device and add it to the chain. Then the second device is U201, which is of the same type. Those are all the devices in that chain and we can add a second chain. The first device in the second chain is U500 and this is a different device it's a Lattice 2064 PLD add that to the chain and this chain has a second device of the same type U600 we'll add that to the chain so now we have the two chains defined the BSDL files are assigned to the appropriate chip and the order is defined from the test data in to the test data out of the two chains on the board. This shows a complete list of all the boundary scan devices on the board, the reference designator, the model file being used, in this case BSDL files, uh, the model name and the package style. Boundary scan devices quite often come in different package styles, so you have to make sure that you select the right package for what's on your board. There are several things that can be done with JTAG Live. We're going to show Buzz here. Buzz is an application that allows you to test your board and test the connections on the board. Before we start into testing, Let's go out and make sure that the boundary scan controller is hooked up and connected to the board properly. And we have an infrastructure test here that will do that for us. So we go out and run the infrastructure test and it comes back and says passed uh, to let us know that everything is hooked up correctly and powered up. Um, but there's also a window here that shows uh, the bit patterns that are being used to uh, test the board. Uh, one of the items here is the ID of the, of devices. So, for example, here is U600 ID, and this is the 32-bit the code for the ID of that device. But everything's hooked up, so let's continue. One of the things that can be done with Buzz is this watch function. Um, if I come over here and drag over a pin, let's go to U500 pin 27 just drag that over, we can now watch that value or observe that value on the board. I come over here and click the watch icon and I'll go out to the board and read the value that's on that particular pin. Uh, even if that pin is a ball underneath the BGA, it will go out and read that value. This specific pin goes to a switch on the board, so I'll push the switch and you'll see the value change. I'll push it again and it'll go back to a 1. So as I push it, it just goes out and uh, reads the value. And you can see down here by the blinking light that it's doing a continuous read of that uh, value. Uh, let's turn that off. And then we can go to the main uh, Buzz application down here. And this will check the continuity between two pins. So let's go to U200, pin 8. And that is connected to a net that goes to U500 pin 3. And now 
when I hit the, the buzz button here on the right, it will go out, run a test pattern from this pin over to the other pin, and you can see here in green that the connection is okay. We also have uh, a sound here, as a regular ohmmeter will, uh, will do for you. Click that, and it goes out and uh, makes the buzz sound to let you know that the connection is valid. We can do more complex connections than uh, a simple point-to-point uh, -point connection that you see here. Let's uh, start out with that same connection, U200 pin 8, and bring it over into this measure box. Measure does the same thing, but now we can have um, multiple connections. Let's start off with uh, what we had before, and let's um, move the columns around so that uh, you can see everything on the screen here. And now you can see on U200 pin 8, we're going to drive a zero across the net to this other pin. I'll say measure, and that value will come over here. Over here in the, the buzz window, uh, the values were automatically uh, determined and tested um, by JTAG Live. Here, the user has control over the values that are being set. So I just change it to a 1, and the 1 goes across. But this specific net goes to another boundary scan pin, U600, pin 22. Just drag that over here. And now you can see that there are two drivers and one receiver. You can uh, work up any number of connections here or multiple connections with other um, boundary scan pins and other nets. We can't have two devices driving it at the same time. So let's come over here and make that high impedance. Tell it to go. And this zero will come over here and drive it to a one. Likewise, we can uh, or drive it to a zero. We can um, Drive it to a 1, or we can make this high impedance and drive this to a 0 and do it again. So we can do any number of connections, any number of buses from one pin to many pins, or in this case, a couple of pins to, to one pin. Um, the constraints window um, allows you to put constraints on your board. For instance, this may be uh, a data bus. So a data bus would may go to uh, multiple boundary scan devices, but it uh, may also go to uh, memory devices. So you don't want the memory devices to be interfering with your tests. So you can put uh, some constraints. In other words, a drive the chip enables to disable uh, the devices. This particular board has a couple of memory chips on it. Uh, it's, they're not on this specific net though but uh, I can show you how that's done. Just drag it over here, change the value, and make a little note as to uh, what is being done here. This will uh, disable the, the SRAM on the board. And there's another one here. There's a flash on this board as well. I can uh, disable that. It's pin 24 change the value, and make a note that this disables uh, the flash. So now as I'm making measurements up here, uh, these uh, two devices, the SRAM and the flash, will be automatically turned off during the test so they won't interfere. So I can change this to a 1, and uh, of course the value gets across here, but at the same time these devices will be disabled. So I hope this short demonstration gave you an understanding of the JTAG Live Buzz product. Uh, please go up to jtaglive.com and download your free copy of Buzz today. Thank you.